Number 25. At the end of a race, a runner decelerates from a velocity of 9 meters per second at a rate of 2 meters per second squared. How far does she travel in the next 5 seconds? All right, so let's just sketch a quick picture. So let's say here the runner is located at this particular point. And what we're going to do now is we'll draw in her uh, direction that she's traveling. Okay, and it says that the runner decelerates from a velocity of 9 meters per second. So I'm assuming that that means that that is the velocity at which she is starting out at, or the initial velocity. So 9.00 meters per second. And the acceleration, the deceleration in this case, but the acceleration uh, will be negative 2.00 uh, meters per second squared. Now it wants to know how far, right, uh, does the runner travel? So it looks like we're looking for this particular displacement, right? So that's my variable. And it says that they want to know how far uh, does she travel in the next five seconds. So they also gave us a time. Uh, they gave us a time. That looks like an F. Let's try one more time. There we go. So they gave us a time of five seconds. Okay. So um, let's think about the formulas of kinematics. And boom, there they are, right? If only they could come that easy to you on the test, right? So here are the formulas. I'll put them in the upper right-hand corner. And uh, what I want to do now is I want to look at what I'm given. So I'm given the initial velocity. I'm given acceleration. I'm, I'm given time, and I'm asked for the distance. And what we want to do is we want to see, do we know any formulas that relate those four together um, in one equation? And it looks like we do, right? So it looks like the second one is going to be our winner. Okay, so let's take that formula and rewrite it. So let's... Uh, Change in displacement is equal to the initial velocity multiplied by time plus one half of the acceleration multiplied by time squared. Okay, so to find x here, the displacement, I need to know the initial velocity, which was 9 meters per second. The time was 5 seconds plus then one half of the acceleration, and that was negative 2.00, right? And then the time value um, was, again, 5.00 seconds and that's squared. So let's just be a little neater here. Even though the math will work out nicely when I have 9 and 5 there, let's just put the um, values in with their appropriate uh, number of significant figures. So the initial velocity was 9.00, and the time again was 5.00 seconds. So I'm not even going to bother putting units in here because again, I have consistency in the units. Right, time is in seconds, my velocity was in seconds, the acceleration is in seconds, so that's all good. And the uh, displacement values here are in meters and meters, so that's all good. All right, so let's just now plug this all into the calculator. So 9 times 5, uh, you might not need to do that, right? In the calculator, 9 times 5 is 45. Now add to that uh, 1 half times negative 2 times 5 squared. Okay, and that comes out to be negative 25. And now let's add them together. So the uh, change in displacement should be 20, and the unit will be meters. Okay, so that's how far she travels in the next five seconds. So that's the answer to letter A. Now let's take a look at letter B. What is her final velocity? So let's pick out that particular point in our picture. I'm going to dot it right here in red. Okay, right here would represent the final velocity value, and that's now what we are looking for. So let's see if we can figure out a, um, an equation that relates the known variables, right? So there's a couple of actually equations you can select, but I would actually, um, I would recommend that you choose this one at the top, number one, that I just boxed in red on the upper right-hand corner. Uh, the reason why I'm going to choose that one is because, well, let me just rewrite it down here on the bottom left, and then I'll tell you the reasoning initial velocity plus acceleration times time. The reason why I'm going to choose this is because the velocity, the initial velocity was given, the acceleration was given, and the time was given. So I don't have to worry about if I made a mistake, let's just say in calculating my displacement, I don't have to worry about it, uh, that mistake propagating into my uh, next calculation. All right. The only, the only thing I could have mistakenly done is copy down the numbers wrong. Right? Whereas if I use a formula that involves displacement, 
and I want to solve then for the final velocity, maybe I would have chosen something like this equation that I just circled on the upper right hand corner. I could have used this because I know the initial, I know the acceleration, and I just calculated the displacement. The problem though is that if I messed up calculating my displacement, then now my uh, final velocity will also be off. So try to minimize the chance for error, okay? It's not only a good strategy here in physics, but it's a good strategy in life. Who would have guessed you get life advice here too, right? All right, so back to business. So the initial velocity is nine meters per second, right, 9.00. The acceleration was again negative 2.00, and then the time was uh, five seconds. Okay, so it looks like my final answer should have three significant figures. Okay, and let's do that. So nine uh, plus negative two times five. I put 90 instead. I mean, we don't even need a calculator, right? So why am I even wasting my time? So this is 9.00. Right, negative two times a negative five is gonna be a negative 10, right? And that's gonna to be to that decimal. And then when we now actually um, do this subtraction, uh, we're going to go out only to the ones place. Okay, so let's see what we get. So this will work out to be a negative 1.0. Okay, so it actually drops down to two significant figures. All right, in any case, um, so that would be the answer for letter B, okay? Negative one uh, meter per second. And letter C says, evaluate the result. Does it make sense? No, right? No, the answer doesn't make sense. Why doesn't it make sense? Well, how the runner, she ended the race, right? And I assume she's going to come to a stop, which means that her velocity, well, her velocity, final velocity could have been zero, but maybe she didn't come to a stop yet. So maybe it was less than the nine meters per second that she started out at. I don't know, maybe it'd be seven or six or five or four or three or two or one or all the way to zero. But once we calculate a negative velocity, um, this implies that the runner is now moving backwards, right? Does that make sense? Would somebody stop and then start running back? Maybe, maybe they drop something, right? <laughs> maybe they... Maybe they dropped their watch or their iPhone or whatever the case is, and they had to run backwards. I don't know, but I don't think that's what happened here. So I'm going to say it doesn't make sense um, because it, why would the runner have turned around unless, like I said, for the reasons I just discussed. All right. So that would conclude part C. Uh, part C, no sense. Okay. So guys, remember, if this helped you out at all, please do subscribe, and I will see you next time.